Hello, family. Blessings to all. Praises to the Most High. Honor to His Son, Yeshua, and unto the Ruach. Coming back with another video. I s mentioned this young lady in my uh, last video. Her name is Becky Hansen. Credits goes to her. Um, this is what um, I was speaking of when um, she had actually spoke about having a vision, about the awakening of um, of black people so um, in America. So I wanted to definitely share this with you all. Um, I'm going to put two videos together because um, she had done this three times, I want to say. But one is going more in depth of what, you know, she experienced in the vision. Um, but I'm going to start with the one right here that says 50 years, a 50 year Martin Luther King, as you see it here. And then I'll go to the one above, which is said a great black awakening. So, um, and there was another one because this is one year. Okay. So we'll go with this one. Tomorrow is the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. And I'd like to say happy Jubilee year to all my brothers and sisters who are especially affected um, ethnically or spiritually by Martin Luther King Jr.'s death. And happy awakening. It's... Uh, exciting. It's time. It's time to awaken. It's time to recognize the truth from the lies, the deception from the reality, and it's time to rejoice <laughs> that um, we can no longer be required to um, agree with what's been dictated to us by the mainstream media and um, powerful politicians who just want a vote, who want to manipulate and guilt trip and pressure all of us, no matter what skin color we have, no matter what background we have, into voting a certain way so that we don't appear to be... Um, prejudice or mean-spirited, it's just time to wake up. It's time to say enough is enough. And it's exciting because this cloud that hovered over our nation after Martin Luther King Jr.'s um, death occurred has been blown away by the breath of God. And an awakening is here a revival is, it's here, but it's about to break out. And especially for the black community, um, people are waking up. It's, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. 1968 to 2018, 50 years. Happy Jubilee. I believe Martin Luther King Jr. is looking down from heaven and it's going, yay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And it's a thrill. It's exciting. Um, yeah, so happy awakening. So um, she actually was given, and she'll tell more in the second video uh, what that vision was. But I want to give show here with a brother or sister, um, Hebrew. actually said to her uh, in a comment um it says uh yes there is a great awakening of the most high uh el yulim him um yahuwah is awakening his chosen his true chosen people the so-called negroes scattered throughout the world the whole world as bond men and bond women deuteronomy 28 and 68 we are the descendants of the ancient children of Israel. We are the bloodline offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, Jacob. 
my Gentile sisters stay on the straight and narrow path. Um, so this is what actually uh, one said to her, one of our Hebrew brothers, I want to say. So I'm going to go to the um, second video. So in this awakening, what makes it so unique is that the Almighty is manifesting himself to us in so many ways. My experience was I heard a voice. He asked a question. He asked me where the slavery came from. And when I said that I did not know, he led me immediately, it surfaced within my spiritual room to um, go read about Noah and his three sons. Well, the Almighty never had um, led me to the Bible in that way to study the Bible. So I didn't even know where to go. So he led me where I Googled where, about Noah and his three sons. And I went into Genesis and start reading. And I was reading for maybe a day or so about, you know, that is going forward as he was leading me to. And then he led me to other areas like on Google on this website, I want to say, then back on YouTube. And that's when I saw a video about we the people. And I was like, what? But I still did not, you know, take it all in. I still was like in a, in a state of mind, like, huh? Then I saw a video where someone say, no, the ones in the land, they're the true people. We are of ham. So I was like, what? Because when he led me to read about Noah and the three sons, it did not show up in that area at that point within the Bible to say, um, you know, one was Shem. I mean to say that Shem was the progenitor of the Negro race. Cause back in my head and mind was told and what I've heard and never really took it in and, you know, had it to do in me any way about we being Hamites um, because we were cursed and our skin was dark. That, that never stuck with me. It, it never, you know, been something that I lived in. I always knew I was a child of the most high and um, I was blessed, but I didn't understand in fullness. So that was my awakening. There are ones who are waking up by one brother said that he was sitting looking at this uh, documentary about um, back in where it was, um, it was some type of march and they were being, you know, um, just being, you know, just treated meanly out on the streets and, um, and whatnot. And, and he said that the almighty spoke to him and said, those same people that you see, um, in this documentary are the same, uh, people that are out of Egypt. This descendants, uh, you know, are those people are the ones that came up out of Egypt as slaves. And he said, he kind of looked around. He was like, what, where did that came from? And he pushed it aside. And then years later, that's when the almighty, you know, came back in full and showed him and, and he revealed some more things to him. So I want to go back to me when that actually, uh, when, the, when I heard a voice that stopped me in my tracks in my house, I heard the voice so loud. I looked up to heaven when I was answering back and say, I didn't know where slavery came from. But months before that, it had surfaced for me to, I got a more of a, a zeal or, you know, uh, interest in wanting to know more about my history, who I was, where I came from about 11 months before that. So that is my story and this other young man's story. And then there was a young lady who, um, she said that she asked the almighty, she said, who am I? She said, you know, I want to know who am I? You know, I know I'm a descendant of slaves, but who am I? And the almighty spoke to her and said that she was of Shem, Shemite. She was a Shemite. She didn't even know what that was. So she went and looked it up and come to find out that Shem, you know, was the progenitor over the Negro race in Hamites. Where that, she said she didn't know what was a Hamite. She didn't know what was a Shemite. A Japheth night, um, I, she didn't know any of that. The most high told her that, told her that in the moment when she asked him sincerely from her heart, who am I? He said that she was a Shemite. I have a video of that as well, of a young lady giving her testimony. It's so many in a supernatural way of how the almighty have, you know, brought forth this truth to us. So those who say that we're not, I say different to you in the sense of not only showing you biblically, we got testimonies of sharing each individual moments. And not only that one, I was on a page on YouTube 
And this young man had made a comment and I made, shared my testimony under his comment. And that one comment got over 400 and 400, I mean, 540 something likes at that time. And everybody started putting their testimonies, how they became uh, awoke, you know, awakened. And it was so amazing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in my um, past, like in my business, my, my world was wrapped around my models and talent. And I gave them exposure by bringing them on to my many different talk shows and radio talk shows and putting them in magazines and um, whatnot. And so in this, you know, I was... Um, feel like the Almighty was leading me to start my that up again, but using it for a platform for ones to come on and share about their testimony about, you know, them coming in into this awakening and how they, um, you know, became saved far as understanding this truth even further, you know, about Yeshua. So, um, I'll do as the Almighty lead me to do, but I'm going to go to this next video. I know I got kind of off a little bit, but I wanted to share at least my testimony and two others. And there's so many other testimonies out there. So many Caucasian people who the Almighty is speaking to and tell them that we are the true people and they're making videos about it. So people who sit and say, nah, this can't be true. You don't want to know the truth. You need to seek him, seek him d diligently and, um, sincerely and, and let him, you know, know, um, I mean that he will actually give you this truth. Now I want to just say this cause it's surface. When I was about in the um, seventh or eighth grade, I had an open vision. Did not know at the time that what it, what it was, but I was in front of a TV, looking at um, Soul Train, and when the it was, should have went to commercial about the hair care products or whatnot, it actually went to nine women popping up on TV, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three of threes, and all of them were black women, beautiful black women. And when I got to the ninth picture, I didn't know any of the other eight women. I never met them, never saw them before a day in my life. But when I got to the ninth picture, it was my aunt who was dead. But in that, I knew her out of all those nine women. She was the only one I knew. And I was in seventh or eighth grade. It was an open vision. Now I know what it is. And the Almighty did not bring that back to me until I got in Germany where I was led and he led me to go to get more rooted into him and to understand more of my spiritual walk and all the gift that I've had, you know, have and what he have, you know, have placed upon me. And um, he revealed to me the ninth woman was, of course, my aunt, but she was holy and for me to mimic myself after her. Not knowing who those still other eight women until about six months ago, I was in my house where I'm at now. And I asked him, I said, well, father, will I ever meet those other eight women that I saw? Now I'm 53 years old now. And that's when he revealed to me and told me those other eight women were of my lineage. They had the same gift. I had the same gift they have. They were of my lineage, people, women I had not even seen before. There was like generations of what he have, you know, um, for his spiritual gifts. And then it went from me and now my nephew, he is one that actually have seen visions and dreams and he's in this walk and he's strong with it too, with our family to help educate our family and to wake our family up even further. So it's amazing you all. So again, those who coming on and may doubt, you know, her or whomever, it's, it's not even about doubting. It's about, I say, seek the almighty for this truth. You know, understand, let him put you on the quest that he's put so many of us on. Amen. So I'm going to go to her next video and it's here and I'm going to start it at, um, about, uh, so, five. So is it three? We'll start at here, 251. The supernatural or God's ability to communicate with his people through his rhema word, then I, I, you know, I would, I don't know how to help out that there, but. I'm just going to share what happened to me. So I just received what I would call visions. 
or like pictures in my mind. So, um, I've already shared about the five strongholds and the altar one. It's up on YouTube. And if one person sees it and makes them cry out to God and somehow give their life to Jesus, that's great. But I'm going to talk about another vision I had. I ended up getting woken up at 3 in the morning around there every day for about two or three weeks in a row. I never had to set my alarm. I just would wake up wide awake, like totally alert. And after the five strongholds and altar vision, God showed me a vision about a great awakening and um, so I'm going to share about the great awakening vision I saw one of those evenings when I was in prayer just praying for the United States praying for the healing of our nation praying for the division of just any division whether it was beliefs political beliefs or um just a sense of feeling betrayed or hurt or un um, acknowledged because I could see the manifestations, the physical, you know, pain of just a lot of stuff going on. For an example, Black Lives Matter was a movement that was um, prominent and it you know, to me, it just seems like that was a physical representation of a deeper spiritual thing happening. And there was pain. Initially, I believe that that movement was started because of um, probably good intentions. So, anyway, um, I just prayed for healing, especially regarding racial healing and reconciliation and just that God would do it, that God would, you know, we don't have all the answers. And um, so God showed me <laughs> that um, when Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, I saw a cloud cover the nation, especially on the eastern half of the United States. I don't know what that means. And the eastern half of the United States mostly was covered. Um, maybe, I don't know why, I'm not going to read into it. Um, it was covered in, a, in like a cloud, and the cloud was low, and it was a fog. It was more of a fog, and it was a fog of grief, and it was a sleepy sleepy like fog that caused people to fall asleep in the spirit and it happened in 1968 when he was shot and killed and I just saw the United States like laid out before me like a map and I saw on the eastern half of it it was covered in this low laying foggy covering of grief like a grief cloud and then I saw another just next scene, I guess, of um, a lot of black people individually walking into <coughs> their front door of their homes. And I saw people walking upstairs into, like, you know, their apartment or brown house. You know, those brownstone, brownstones, those kind of things. And I saw, like, like an individual woman, let's say, walking upstairs, opening her door, going in, shutting the door, and then going into her room, going into her room, and getting into bed, putting the covers on, falling asleep. And then I would see another person, you know, walking up like a man, walking down the sidewalk, turning into his yard, opening the door of his house, going in falling asleep, going to bed, falling asleep. And so I just saw several individual people, a few of them were like white or another national, like skin color, but most people were black. And um, God just showed me that those, um, the movement 
that Martin Luther King Jr. represented when he died, people were so overcome with grief and just hopelessness. And just now what do we do? Now what? And they went home and they were so consumed by grief and hopelessness and sadness that they all went home, shut the door, and went to bed and went to sleep because they couldn't handle the pain anymore. And I have felt that way in my own life. Like, it's so hopeless. How do I even wake up tomorrow? I don't even want to get up. Like, I just want to go to sleep and never get up, you know? I've been there before, but this was a nation thing. This was like a generation thing. But then, I was like, oh, I wonder what year, I didn't think about it. I wonder what year Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. So I looked it up after God showed me this vision, 1968. And then I was like, whoa. And then the Lord showed me a cloud. I mean, a, a wind that God was like <sighs> breathing a big breath of wind. And it was blowing away the cloud. God's wind was blowing off this fog. And he was waking everybody up. And they were getting up. They were getting out of their beds. And they were waking up. And they were coming out of their homes. And they were awake again. And God showed me just this understanding. I immediately understood and had a knowledge that 50 represents the year of Jubilee in the Hebrew culture. Also, it is literally a year of Jubilee right now in 2018 in the Hebraic calendar year 5778. We are in a Jubilee year. You can think about Jerusalem. Obviously, it's the 50th anniversary of Jerusalem being um, part of Israel since 1968. And this year, 2018, is the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s death. And I am seeing literally all around me um, not all around me, um, literally, physically, but, um, on, like, Twitter, and on the news, and, um, j like, YouTube, and every, uh, like, Kanye West, and people are thinking, Con Candace Owens, and Jordan Peterson, and the awakening is literally happening in 2016. I, I got this vision and I was like, what is this supposed to mean? And I just started to pray into it and just pray for healing, especially for my African American, black, whatever you, you know, whatever someone would like to call themselves. I've been praying, um, just for healing. And I'm so happy I'm seeing it happening and it's a God thing. And it's not just intellectual, it's spiritual. It's not just caring about the nation again and what's going on. Martin Luther King Jr. was a prophet. I really believe he was a prophet. And it, just like Jesus, when he was um, going to be killed, his disciples were grieving and they fell asleep because they were overcome with grief. It's the same thing with Martin Luther King Jr. And now, right now, we are in an awakening. And this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I really believe there's revival. It's here. It is here. We're not even on the threshold doorstep anymore. It's here. So praise God. And he is about rest restoration and healing and reconciliation and what the enemy meant for harm to destroy Martin Luther King Jr.'s life, God will turn it around, and he has already turned it around. He's going to turn it around. So I'm excited, and um, it's just wonderful to be alive. It's wonderful to be a part of this generation that gets to watch God move and gets to watch a nation literally awaken and unplug from the matrix. Like, it's been 50 years of a matrix, and everyone's unplugging, and it's a thrill. And you know what? It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. There's an accuser, and we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places, and we have an adversary, and he's called the accuser, and he will accuse us, and he will lie, and he'll twist the truth. It only has to be 99% true to be a lie. That's it. So, I don't know if that would encourage anyone, but even if just one person is encouraged by that, just that God loves 
you. God loves you. God wants you to know that his ways are for you, that you have a destiny, you have a hope and a future, and God's for healing, God is for restoration. So, <clears throat> praises to the Most High. So, I just was looking at the comment here, um, some comments, and just to just want to go in a little bit deeper here. Um, this young man say, uh, The awakening is that we as black people find out that we are the Most High. Um, chosen people, um, and then he said, period, which which was a shock to the core, but the most I knew how to bring me across that line without me freaking out in a bad way. When I got it, I really got it. The funny thing is that it was like the light bulb turned on. Mm -hmm. And like, duh, man, of course it makes perfect sense. Then someone says she knows who we are. Then the next person says, maybe not yet. I'm not surprised a lot. Don't because they haven't been given revelation or put two or two together like a lot of my f white friends did. Now they know and are really extra polite or keep repeating. They know, LOL. Oh, wow. So um, it says all praises to the most. I feel like I'm going to explode with all this truth. I'm, I'm coming into facts. Um, we are his chosen people. First people, um, it says here, yes, friends, it is the best feeling in the world to know this. It is the answer to all the evil we face and self-hatred. And it says here, the idea of a chosen people is racist. Of course, um, the idea of a chosen people is racist. Um, it says here, make, it makes me happy to see you relay this message. I woke up six months ago and ever since I found out I'm a Israelite, I have been able to walk with God in ways I could never imagine. I hope for my people and the Gentiles salvation. Also it says here, um, yeah, it's, it didn't matter until the world found out it's black people who were ancestors of the slaves who came over on the good ship, Jesus, okay? Then another says, yeah, that's good, brother. I found out I was an Israelite going on a year now. It's a beautiful feeling and a blessing at the same time. And it got me closer to Yah and changed my wicked ways around. I only want salvation for our peoples, because, brother, not for the Gentiles. I only want salvation for our people, brother, not for the Gentiles. Well, according to in, in the book of Romans, um, it is to the Gentiles as well as they can be grafted in. Um, so the Gentiles been kicking our since 70 AD when the Romans empire took over Israel and made our ancestors flee to West Africa and up until this day, not trying to stop you from loving the Gentiles, but I just want you to be conscious about it and all my brother. And, and that's all. Um, then it goes there. You can't get mad at us. Get mad at the truth and take it up with God because that's what he said in the Holy Bible. Besides, having a chosen people can't be more racist than what white people and white supremacy have done to blacks in the past and all the way up till now. Um, another said, I'm black. And if you believe this, you are no man of the Lord. I'm black. And if you believe this, you are no man of the Lord. Any man who rejects another man of the Lord does not know the Lord Almighty. Simple as that. Um, another says, you are not an Israelite. You are a, a sub-Saharian. You are genetically, linguistically, and culturally related, unrelated to ancient Hebrews. So, of course, you know, one's putting their comments in. Indeed, and now they are afraid. Um, another says, the white elite always knew this was coming. Yeah, they have our um, books had it. Um, they've added to it. And when I said books, what we know as a Bible today and it being canonized, you have to go back into the ones who actually far as the Pope and, and uh, the Romans and who invaded the land and when this fleeing count came about knowing I'm st sitting before you as a descendant of ones who escaped from that Roman invasion back in 70 AD. 
We are descendants of slaves in America where those slave ships went as Judah. We are part of that tribe, the Judah tribe that escaped and made it further into Africa. But 1500 years later, 1500 years later, the slave ships came as a prophecy was unfold. What I see in understanding what I'm, you know, getting to understand and um, just even seeking the almighty for more understanding. They had to took time to have these people become powerful, which is the one race that was above us. I know one say, well, you know, Arabians, they had us into bondage, but this bondage was no, none like um, it because of the ships took us to a land where we did not speak the language. Okay where it was says, you know, about the eagle and, um, whatnot. So, um, they had to build the ships. Um, like I said, he only wanted one race over us. And that was one color of people in this captivity. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? There were a point in time where the blacks, so-called blacks were over the whole earth, which is still to this day, but they were in rulership. There were kings, there were queens and princess and princess and, and dukes and, 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 um, and they ruled, but there were a time where that power was shifted, where the, you know, white skin, pale skin became more powerful. And that, when that reversal could have been when, um, the uh, bubonic bubonic plague came, the black disease came, black death came. Cause it was like 200 years of no, and I want to say 200 years of no rulership because over want to say in the millions of blacks died in that era, but they got it made it like whites died in that era. No, there were blacks. And I truly believe that's the time. And I want to say that the almighty allowed them to become in power, in power to be more powerful. Um, also I saw a video that the pale skin, which is the, the Caucasian race that, they were always considered the weaker far as because they would, you know, get sick because of the recessive genes, like far as, um, the sun. And we, we always looked upon them as treating them special because they were, you know, sickly according to, uh, that. And I, and I saw this somewhere and I'm not saying that I read a book, but I saw this somewhere and it understood because, Everybody treated them, you know, like, you know, took them upon, like when you think of the Caucasus mountain, you think of how one, you know, being in the caves and start intermingling with, um, ones that came from Africa. And, and this is what they're saying that the mutation and how this came into play. And, you know, some people call it from the, you know, how they came into our race due to the fallen angel. However, it so be they're here. The almighty, you know, that they're here. He placed them in rulership over us for a period of time. He didn't have the Asians. He didn't have, you know, all this and all that. He had one particular color over the Judah captivity. Hello, somebody. So it's going to reverse where we will rule again, where we will be that, um, you know, far as the heavenly, when, you know, you speak of, um, the kingdom will come to earth and all nations outside and how we know all nations, nations will be outside of us because they will have to come up for the feast day. So, and if they don't, they will perish. So it's so much to this. So we will be in rulership and I'm not saying this to like make anybody feel bad or either have you to look at it and say, Oh, we're going to be above, not beneath. You know, we're not going to be the tail anymore. We're going to be the head to, um, think that, you know, we better than anyone have a chip on our shoulders. That's not what the almighty want us to be about. It's going to be reversed because we have been set aside as his chosen to be, as he said, kings and queens and prince and princesses. It already been written to be a light of his chosen seed, mainly for those to know him through us. Okay. So that's all I have family. Um, just wanted to share this and, um, just, you know, Google or either, you know, seek the almighty to lead you to what videos, 
Um, or you can just come on here and Google about, you know, once talking that we are the true people because they know it. The Almighty have revealed there were some Caucasian people said, no, that can't be. And they went to him because they wanted to know. And he revealed to them because they said at first, no, this can't be. But then, you know, the Almighty revealed to them. So if anybody have a problem with this, the first thing I'm going to say to you, have you seek the Almighty for truth? If you haven't done that, then, you know, don't make a comment. Let him reveal to you. But when you go, go sincerely that you want to know so you can get in the right lineup. Because like it said, he's going to redeem us. He's coming to gather back who has been scattered due to slavery, who have been in bondage. Who will cleave to us and go. That means that you will have to understand this truth and be able to deal with this truth. Will the fallen away come from when they find out that Yeshua is not white? Will the fallen away come from when they find out that the true people are the blacks, the ones that you've been beating and killing and hanging on a tree like they did Yeshua, hung him on a tree? Will that be the fallen away? That's why I say...